and welcome to the G17 Collectibles channel. Thank you for taking the time to check this out. Today it's time for the full room tour. Now for those of you who have never seen one of my videos before, over the past few weeks I have done a couple of highlight videos for the, the 1.6 slash Hot Toys collection as well as the Star Wars collection in the room. So if you want to know more about these particular um, sets of collections, please do check out those videos. Um, today, we're not going to spend much time talking about them. Uh, I'll maybe just look at each individual item and tell you what it is. But I'll not tell you the story behind some of them because it's already been said in the other videos. So please do, as I said, check them out. If you like what you see today, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions um, or comments to make, I would always gladly appreciate you taking the time to post them up um, and I've I've got an Instagram account so it's g17 underscore collectibles if you want to see some still shots um, of the collection etc and some updates to it please do join me on there as well so the past few weeks and what I'm going to plan to do on a weekly basis is kind of post up videos on the collection from individual items to display tips and ideas and how all this came about um, and really just delve into the uh, the collection that I've amassed. I've been collecting since um, I think I bought my first item in 2001, so that's been what 20 years now. The bulk of the collection has been bought probably in the last 10 years, um, and it's it's yeah it's an expensive hobby, but um, very very rewarding. And all the things that are coming out, the the market right now, and the amount of companies that are producing stuff is crazy. The amount of pre-orders that I've got and the amount of things on my wish list is, uh, is, is pretty long. So we'll jump in. We'll start over here in this, this corner. As I said, I'm not going to talk about um, any of the, 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 the one six or Star Wars items in any great detail or depth. Uh, and tell you about how I came about having it or the price I paid, etc. That's all in other videos. So again, please do check them out. But we'll just go from this corner and we'll work our way around the full room. So in the corner, 47 Ronin Sword. Um, I actually really like the movie. I think the movie was was, was, was really good. So I um, jumped out and bought uh, the, the katana from the movie. Um, it's a live blade. It's not massively sharpened, so you can take out the wooden sheath. For the life of me, I can't remember the, the manufacturer's name. Uh, but bought that shortly after the film was released, um, £160 for that one. And it just sits nicely in the corner. Down here, we've got a separate video on this, but this is the Toy NK Indiana Jones um, Golden Fertility Idol. A lovely wee piece. Again, check that one out if you want to have a, a closer look at that. It's about a 10 minute video already posted. Here we have the, um, I think 2008, summer 2008 um, Dark Knight poster. It's not a cinema poster, it's just a single one sheet. I believe this is the one that was banned for some period of time. I was lucky enough to get it that particular year. Um, and it's always been framed, so I've had it's been in the frame for what, 11 years now since I've had it, maybe 12, 12 years. Fantastic poster, it takes up a huge amount of wall space, but. Uh, being a big Dark Knight fan, can't do without it. And then here we've got my um, Michael J. Fox <clears throat> display. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet Michael J. Fox at London Comic Con. So not only did I get my picture taken with him, but I also had him sign uh, an aluminium plate. <clears throat> so you can see there, that's just like a, a 10 by 8 inch um, sheet of, of aluminium. Uh, and I had... Um, Michael signed that at the con and then I had it um, custom um, displayed in that frame above that we've got the Rogue One art print signed by Gareth Edwards again we'll go through that in the other video and then down here this is I said in, in maybe another video I like to group everything kind of together this is a bit of an oddball display um, the top shelf here so far is like busts and uh, and, and, and obviously the cowl and the ghost in the shell uh, face mask, Geisha face mask. But this will be the area, I've got a couple of busts, I've got the, the Robocop one half scale bust on its way uh, and I've obviously 
pre-ordered the uh, the Robocop 21 bust, which we don't know if it's going to actually materialise now, but that's roughly where this will go, and I'll change the display around. So left to right, we've got the back kill. Um, who's that made by again? Is it the, the Noble Collection? Um, that's pretty nice. That's a pretty nice item. I really like it. Got a bit of a bargain in that one. I think I paid £120 because it didn't have a box and it was a couple of wee bits, a, wee, a couple of wee flaws on the cowl itself. Um, really heavy piece, so you need to put it somewhere quite stable. Uh, it can take the weight. But yeah, that's the uh, Dark Knight back kill. This is the Sideshow Legendary Scale Wolf Predator. Um, I love it. I know there's a lot of controversy around this one, but I think it's a, a fantastic piece by Sideshow. This I have already reviewed in a separate video, so if you're interested in finding out maybe a little bit more on that one, please do check the other video out. And this is an unfinished 3D print of the Ghost in the Shell Geisha mask. I bought this on Etsy. Uh, it's too cold at the moment. This arrived just before um, Christmas. I think it arrived in November. Um, it's too cold at the moment to paint and I usually do all my painting outside. Too cold and I'm not willing to take the risk on um, the, the, the paint finish um, being affected by the temperature. Um, in Scotland at the moment it's below zero degrees and has been for a couple of months. So I'm waiting for the spring to come in and then we'll get this one finished off. But the 3D print is amazing. It's made by um, a company called Russotech or Russotech. Uh, it did take quite a bit of time to finally get the item from initial order, but the guy does fantastic work. Um, very minimal cleanup required. I sanded the faceplate to get the uh, a nice smooth finish, primed it, and I've just gave it a coat of white at the moment. There's a lot more to do to this this one, but um, there's a lot of parts to still fit on it. But 3D print wise, it's absolutely amazing what 3D printing can achieve nowadays. Um, and it's very crisp, it's very detailed and very sharp. And then below this is something that I built myself. <clears throat> Gamers out there will um, be familiar with this um, particular weapon. If you're not a gamer, you're not going to have a clue what this is. This is the Gears of War um, original hammer burst from the first game. I must have built this shortly after the game came out. God knows when that was, a number of years ago anyway. And this is the very first thing I think I ever really built. It's built, it's got a wooden core. So what I did was I cut the template out of the gun and layered up several um, layers of wood and then started to build around it. This took a very long time to try and build. I don't have power tools per se. I don't have, you know, big bench um, power tools. I do everything by hand if I'm building something. So yeah, I've got sanders and I've got drills, just hand tools, hand power tools. But generally, um, I build everything with files and, sand, you know, sandpaper and... Uh, this is a real mixed bag, so there's wood in there, there's sculpey in there, you know, some of the sculpey items like that band moving around there, the top kill part of the, the, the gun there is all sculpey. A lot of the details on the gun are either um, screws, sculpey, um, or small bits of wood, but uh, it's really, really heavy as well because of the construction of it. Um, I'm really pleased with it, it's something I'm quite proud of, um, never seen another one like it because it's all hand built it's not completely accurate let's be honest it's uh, there's a lot of things that probably change about it now but from a first attempt at building um a prop um or a, a weapon i'm i'm pretty chuffed with the, the overall result and also built a display stand um, so there you are there's the gears of war hammer burst up here we've got an autograph Signed in person, Peter Mayhew Chewbacca. Again, we're not spending any time looking really at the Star Wars pieces. Here's my helmet wall. So I've got from top left to right, we've got the EFX Darth Vader. We've got the RS Prop Masters Red 5 Luke Skywalker. We've also got the RS Prop Masters Wedge helmet, um, side edition. Uh, next to that, you've got the RS Prop Masters Y-Wing. 
And then finally on the right hand side you've got the Black Series, the Hasbro Black Series Red 5 Luke Skywalker helmet. Shelf below that we've got the, from left to right, we've got the Anovos um, Short Trooper helmet, the Anovos Mandalorian helmet, the Anovos Stormtrooper helmet and then some third party Scout helmet, um, unknown maker. And then I've got my Emilio Estevez um, autograph in the corner again. That's just there as a placeholder. It's just taking that particular space up. I don't like really like empty spaces per se. So I just put autographs in different places just to kind of give me something on that shelf. Eventually another helmet will go in that space. Down here we've got the High Elven Warrior Sword by United Cutlery. Owned that one for a number of years. Um, I think it cost me about £200. It's a really long, um, heavy sword. Uh, what is that, about four foot or something wide or something? It's, it's, it's a crazy long sword. Um, and awkward to display, you need you need a space in the room that can accommodate not only the, the, the kind of height, but also the length. So it sits just above my couch in this room. Moving on to some other helmets, we've got the United Cutlery Witch King helmet. I have owned that for a very long time. I think I must have bought that in about 2009, 2010-ish. I'm not great with dates and years of when I got things um, really, but at the time this had a broken um, spike. Uh, I only paid £150 for it, so I do like a bargain. I'm a bit of a bargain hunter when it comes to uh, collectibles. Um, that's part of the fun of it, chasing down uh, an item and trying to get it for as cheap as possible. And okay, it's not mint condition, it does have that break in the central spike. It's been repaired, and to be honest, I don't really notice it. I'm not fussed. I mean, I, I like a mint collectible, I like something which doesn't have anything wrong with it, a scratch or a dent. And the older I get, the more fussier in particular I get. But 10 years ago, you know, I was collecting on a budget. Um, and sometimes you just have to accept a cheap price for maybe a little bit of damage that you can fix yourself or a wee chip or a wee scratch. It's a good way to get the item that you want for a low cost price if you can cope with that crack or that scratch, etc, etc. And at the time I can't and I can still, you know, to try and get that helmet now, um, very rarely do they come up for sale. But if they do, you're paying a lot of money for it. Um, so £150 on that one at the time and it's a monster helmet, absolute monster. And then moving on to the Gladiator helmet by Factory X. This, along with one other item which I'll show in a, a, a minute, is the first thing I ever owned. I think it was 2001 when I bought this from the Prop Store of London. It is a replica, it's not a screen used in any manner. Made by a company called Factory X, who I don't believe are in um, business anymore. Um, I think it was about £150 at the time, so for you know buying that and, and this other thing um, at the time, it's quite a lot of money for me, you know, being a young man just starting off in the world. But um, Gladiator had just come out, it was an immense film. Uh, and online, um, the internet back in 2000, 2001, it wasn't as diverse and as wide as it is just now. There wasn't a lot of collectible companies out there. So when I saw this and the other item, um, I, I ordered it. And this is what kick-started this collectibles obsession and hobby that I'm now in. Um, so this is one of the earliest pieces I have. And then I've got a, a Ruby's um, Boba Fett helmet. This was gifted to me for my 40th birthday from um, some, some really good friends. Uh, they knew I was a Star Wars fan, collect stuff, uh, and very kindly they went out and, and sourced this helmet, which has been signed in person by Jeremy Bullock, and gave me this as a gift, and uh, it was very much appreciated at the time, and still is. Below that, <clears throat> we've got the Diagostini Millennium Falcon um, part build. It's, it's not finished, um, there's a lot of things still to finish off on it and there's a lot of paint to go on it, I haven't even began painting it. I really don't know when I will. Uh, it's a big job and as soon as I've got some time and some space, the uh, difficulty is, is in the house I don't have a workshop or any real space that I can do stuff and I'm certainly not painting in here. 
Um, so there'll come a point where I will take this away from the, the cabinet and I'll, I'll do some work on it. Or I might even just do it, kind of put all the, the little extra items on and glue them in, in place. But uh, I've not talked too much about that just now. It's unfinished and it's uh, yet to be done. And then down there we've got a little, um, I think that's a Bandai X-Wing, which has been kind of painted and weathered. That's a great little thing. Very low cost. I think it cost me about £15 for the model kit. It was a lot of fun to build. Moving on to this wall, and we'll start at the top and work our way down. Um, oh, before we do, sorry, a couple of art prints here. These the, I never featured these in the, the Star Wars highlight video. I forgot all about it. I believe these are from an artist called Paul Butcher. Uh, I'll, I'll check that and, and put a, a correction up if it's not, but I'm pretty certain they're by an artist called Paul Butcher. These are just um, reprints, you know, they're just prints um, that I got from like, a con. He is on Etsy and he does some fantastic artwork. Um, I really love this one of Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia. Uh, and I had Paul sign them at the con as well. Um, got a Darth Vader one, but I don't have the, the room to display it. But these are just two prints, which are not featured in any other video. But I just want to highlight the fantastic work that Paul had done on these. They're, they're a couple of stunning prints. So get on Etsy, source them if you like them, and uh, get them bought. <clears throat> At the top here, we have got some a mixture between Hot Toys and Enter Bay. Again, I'm not going to discuss these two too much. They're in the other video. We've got the quarter scale Dark Knight. I guess the Dark Knight Rises Batman. We've got the quarter scale Joker from Hot Toys. And over on the right hand side, we've got the Enter Bay Batman Begins. Moving down to one of my favourite shelves in the entire collection um, is my Sideshow Premium Format. Um, statues. The two on the left, Red Sonja um, and the Rebel Terminator are, are just, they, 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 these are the some of the crown jewels of the collection. Red Sonja I've done a video on already, um, so it's worthwhile checking that one out. It's only about 10-15 minutes of watch time uh, and you go through that in a bit more depth. It's a stunning statue. Um, really, really fantastic from the portrait. Everything about it is just absolutely stunning. Uh, I, I love that one. That was about £500 on pre-order um, from a UK website. I've owned that now for maybe, what, what, 18 months or something. And then this one, this is the Sideshow um, Rebel Terminator from the, the Mythos range. This is a stunner. I'm going to do a video on this one um, separately. It just deserves... You know, 10 or 15 minutes airtime uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll pick this one up and we'll do a video on this one really soon this is an absolutely stunning statue the level of detail you know from the buckles to the zips um, to all the individual you know pop components on the belt to the arm to the wiring to the skull even these wee bits on the boots you know sc sculpted it's just a fantastic statue. It really is. I had to pay a bit more for this. I missed out ordering it from Sideshow. I, a lot of things weren't even paid at the time and I decided couldn't afford it. I missed out. It sold out. Um, and they very rarely, it's a very low edition size, so it very rarely comes up on um, the secondary market. I've seen them sell for in excess of £1,000 um, in America. But um, beautiful statue. Picked that up in September 2020 on the secondary market in eBay uh, and I had to pay, including shipping, £770 for it, but it was worth every single penny. It is an absolute stunner. And over here we've got the Batgirl premium format statue by Sideshow. Bought this last year as well. This was a collection ad. Um, £500 I believe and I've got this from Zavi of all places which are generally a little bit more expensive than most places I, I look at in the UK but I think for £500 I did quite well that's a great statue I really 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 like this one the cape has uh, got wires in it so you can pose the cape the sculpt is fantastic um, I really like that head a bit weird how the cape connects but um, it's just a design choice that Sideshow made um, the, the pattern on the suit, the uh, the display base 
Um, very well done, very well painted. I think we'll do a video on that one for a quick 10 minutes in the future because it's worth looking at a bit closer and talking about it. And then over here, <coughs> excuse me, recently picked this one up. Um, I believe I picked this up late October. This is the Harley Quinn premium format, which I had my eye on for quite some time. I managed to pick this up in a local comic shop um, for £350, which was a real bargain, and I do love a bargain. Um, you know, the, the, If you go on eBay right now, or even back in October when I bought it, you would struggle to get one for less than £5, £5.50. And this isn't, this is just standard edition, it's not an exclusive. Um, but the, 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 the local comic shop posted up, they were having a... 30% off sale of all high-end collectibles in the shop um, and I managed to go in that weekend find this and snagged it for £350 uh, it's a fantastic statue I really 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 like this one again I'll do a bit of a video on that Jenny Erso from Star Wars Rogue One I've spoken about this in another video so just comment and mention that this was bought in 2019, December 2019, and it's a great statue. Um, from the cut and sew, fabric, costume, to the portrait, to all the accessories. Really nice. And then this one, this is a bit of an oddball because I've, I'm, I'm currently kind of repairing this statue. When X-23, the premium format X-23 was announced and released many, many years ago, I pre-ordered it. But at the time, you know, I didn't have a lot of money for collecting and eventually decided in my ultimate wisdom to cancel the pre-order. And it was the exclusive edition that I had pre-ordered as well. So I cancelled it and I kind of regretted it ever since because whilst I'm not necessarily a comic book person, uh, I do like my films and my movies, I really just like the look of X-23. I think X-23 is a really cool character. Now, seeing them come up on eBay, over the years, 350, 400, 500 pounds. And I was never going to pay that kind of money for something that I only just liked. You know, I don't love it. I only just like it. And I thought, well, that's a cool statue. I'd like to own that one. So this one came up and it had a bit of damage about it. No box. The claws were all snapped off. There was some chipping on the, the hair. There was some chipping on the base. It doesn't have the foot claws, so you can see a bit of a hole in there. But um, £120. So I thought, 120 quid, Can't say no. So, so far, I have made the, 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 the claws and glued them in place. I've fixed a couple of the, the chips that were on the hair. There is a broken piece of hair that I need to sculpt and paint and blend in. Uh, fixed the base, the base was a bit dirty uh, and had a couple of chips on it so I fixed that and I think for the, the toes I'll just fill them in so she doesn't have um, toe claws, it's just a, a, a finished boot and for £120 and a little bit of work, there you are, X-23 statue, I told you I loved the bargain. <laughs> Let's now <clears throat> move down and look at the, the weapons display. Um, so up here we've got the um, Empire Strikes Back Luke Skywalker blaster. Sorry for the glare there. We've got Empire Strikes Back Luke Skywalker saber from Master Replicas. Below, we've got the Master Replicas Obi-Wan Kenobi saber, weathered edition. And then we've got the Saber Forge Episode 1 um, FX saber. Um, of Obi-Wan Kenobi so I can put a blade in that and it's got all the bells and whistles, sounds and lights <clears throat> and then below that is my um, smaller version of the, the, the what Master Replicas produced in the ATAT model so I decided to make my own um, so that's the, the Revel model kit with the snow speeder all weathered and painted and put in that customised display case up here and we'll open this glass door up We've got a Ghost in the Shell from Optic Pistol. I absolutely love Ghost in the Shell as a movie. I'm, I'm, I like my sci-fi kind of futuristic um, movie stuff. 
absolutely loved the, the, the clear thermoptic pistol that was used by Major. Um, a few very talented people have produced replicas from solid clear resin and um, missed out, missed the boat on them, them custom runs. And I thought, I need to have that, 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 that pistol. I need to have it. So I decided to try and source and make my own. I knew that, and I'll do a video on this of how I constructed it, but this is self-made. So it's a clear plastic airsoft gun. It's not the right model. So it's not accurate to what Major used in the film. This is my version. So this is like, um, it's in the world of Ghost in the Shell, but it's not a major um, pistol. That's why it just says on the plaque, thermoptic pistol. But I had a lot of parts already lying around, so I ordered the, the, the clear plastic gun, £25 I think it was, and it's an H&K um, base. Stripped it apart, um, <clears throat> and then got some styrene, some sheets of styrene, some, and some greebles that I had lying around, and basically just put it together. And you can see in there, I had some um, shell casings, so I got some uh, some sculpey out, and I made some um, bullets to go inside the shell casing. So they're not real; it's uh, sculpey. Uh, painted them off brass, laid them in the clip, and I, I'm really, really happy with the way that's turned out. It's uh, it, it, it only cost me, I think, a maximum of about fifty pounds, or even less, to put it all together, and that includes this acrylic display stand and the plaque. For less than £50, I've managed to get myself uh, from the universe of Ghost in the Shell with an optic pistol. So I'm really happy with that one. Down here we've got the <clears throat> Gen Erso A180 Blaster. So that is an all-metal replica um, from uh, the, the, the kind of the AW Custom is the, the company that gives you the kit to make this blaster. Uh, really, really, really happy with that one. It's a fantastic blaster. I think one of the best looking from the Star Wars universe. It fits right in to all the other props from the original trilogy. I've also got the goggles. Um, the, that's the CB15s, Model 15s, which is a close enough match I could get to the, the goggles using Rogue One. So they're there. And then below that, we've got the Tron Disc. So this is made by Spin Master. Many, many years ago, I had three of these. I had the Rinsler disc, I had the, the Flynn disc, and the white Kevin Flynn disc, um, as well as a couple of other Tron bits and bobs. Sold them all, and I've and regretted it ever since. So I managed to snag this on eBay last year. They're, they're quite expensive now. Um, you know, they're not reasonably difficult to find. You know, they come up every so often, but you'll get 60 or 80 pounds. Um, generally for the Tron disc and I managed to get this one for about, I think about 40. No box, but it works. It's got electronics in it. And I, and I really like the movie Tron Legacy. I think it's a great movie and it's nice to have, um, although it's a, a plastic, you know, kind of toy, it's a great display piece and you can pick it up and play with it without fear of it breaking. <clears throat> Moving on to my Blade Runner display, so I'm a big fan of not only the original Blade Runner, but also Blade Runner 2049. So from left to right, let's run through the things we've got. This is the um, blaster from the recent release, the specialised um, Blu-ray edition. Um, so it's completely static. I think I paid £170 for the special edition DVD with blaster. It does light up, so you've got a couple of LEDs there. Um, so it's it feels as if it's got some metal parts to it, but I think generally it's all a kind of cast resin. But detail wise, and for a display item for that kind of money, you cannot complain at one hundred and seventy pound for it. It's accurate to a certain degree. There's a there's a couple of bits on it that that are not accurate to the actual blaster. But from a display perspective, I think um, if, instead of spending a thousand pounds on the the proper ones, you know, the Temensuke. For 170, you're not going to get much better than, than what's in front of you there. And I've also added in <coughs> the, the ammo box. That's from a, a maker on Etsy, Soul Inertia, I believe the, the person's called. Uh, and I think it goes really well with the, the display. And then we've got the um, signed um, plaque in person. So I met Sean Young at London Comic Con about two years ago, I think and had her sign 
that plaque. <clears throat> Moving on, we've got the Elfin Knights uh, water pistol, which I've got a conversion kit again from Soul Inertia to convert to a blaster. That I bought that pre finding this, so I probably won't do the work to convert that now because I really like the fact that it's a, it's a water pistol, but it's pretty accurate. So I've just put that up the back and in front, two things. Um, bought the badge um, from a seller on the RPF and I made up my own little kind of like officer KD-37 display as well as the little 3D printed horse. I think I paid about £7 for that horse on eBay and it's actually pretty, pretty decent quality. Yeah, you can see some of the, the print lines but um, shape-wise and colour-wise I think that's pretty decent for seven quid. And then over here is a, a 3D printed um, Officer K blaster with the, the, the display plaque in front of it. Not quite yet finished this one. I'm having some real difficulty with the, the handle wrapping. So um, I need to redo that and I also have some paint to finish on that but it's too cold at the moment to paint. So I'm just leaving that where it is and I'll get around to it at some point. I think £45 for that 3D printed blaster on Etsy. And it's a fantastic print, very minimal cleanup. You can see some of the, the detail. You know, to get that in a 3D print, I think it's phenomenal. And I know things are moving along with resin printers and stuff, but um, I think I spent half an hour possibly cleaning this up. Just takes take some of the seam lines away and some of the bumps, etc. Um, but yeah, what a great print for £45. It was, it was a bit of a bargain there. <clears throat> Below here, two items. One Robocop, one Rambo 2. <clears throat> so on the left, we have the Robocop Auto 9. That is a plastic gun that cost me a pound. <laughs> so it's slightly inaccurate, but um, it, yeah, it's a plastic gun at the end of the day. It's, the, it's not like a, a, a metal replica or one of these fancy airsoft ones that are difficult to get. Um, I've owned this for many, 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 many years. Uh, it's it's it is what it is. It's a it's a plastic gun. And then over here we've got the Hollywood Collectibles Group Rambo Two knife display. Um, bought this from a friend. It's the signature edition, and I've just added in the Jade Buddha necklace in front. Um, that's quite an awkward thing to display, to be honest with you, being being a knife. But there's there's multiple things you could do with it. I've just chosen to put it on. This kind of like knife display stand. And then down below, <clears throat> two items. I um, haven't quite worked out how to fix this display to make, make both items look particularly good. But at the back, you've got the Master Replicas, Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow, Flintlock. Bought that at auction uh, three, three years ago, maybe four years ago. £250 at the time, that was a, a bit of a bargain because um, they're difficult to find and get in the UK given the fact that they came out a number of years ago. Um, so £250 for that and it's in mint condition with box. It was a really great bargain to try and get. And then this is the Hasbro um, Ghostbusters Proton uh, wand. This has got all the bells, all the whistles, all the sounds, vibrations, lights. I'm going to do a video on this one. This is £100 and it is a bargain at £100. Um, it's from Ghostbusters Afterlife, I believe. So it's not like the original um, Proton ones from Ghostbusters 1 or 2. But it's a fantastic thing. It's um, it's a toy, basically. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's made of plastic. Um... It's very well done. It's accurate in my opinion. It's got some weathering on it. Um, some things may could have been done better, but for a hundred pound, I'm not going to critique it too heavily. I think the one thing that lets it down is probably the stand. To be fair, but the actual proton one itself is fantastic, and all these switches, toggle switches, you can turn it on and start playing about with these switches and the dials, and it makes all these cool noises. <clears throat> very much the same as what the one in the movie does. Of course, it doesn't actually work. It's just a toy. Moving on. <clears throat> we'll just skip past this section real quick because, again, there's, there is videos on all of this. We've got my Return of the Jedi Boba Fett costume posed in a mannequin. 
We've then got the Hot Toys display. So from left to right, we've got the Luke Skywalker DX. Twin Pack, K2SO, Shira Inui from Rogue One. We've then got the four Ghostbusters from Blitzway. Second shelf down, we've got the Hot Toys Deadshot from Suicide Squad. Hot Toys Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad. Hot Toys Deadpool, second version. And the 3 0 Chappie. We've then got Hot Toys um, City, Hunter Predator, Hot Toys Yondu, Hot Toys Neo, and Hot Toys Jack Sparrow. Another shelf down, we've got the Hot Toys Batman Armory with Batman figure. We've got the Hot Toys um, Joker DX figure as well as something that I custom put together myself um, from the spare parts of the, the Joker DX. Then we have the Robocop stuff, so we've got the Battle Damage Robocop from Hot Toys. We've got a custom Clarence Bodica. One of my favourites, so it's worth a close-up. Then you've got the Hot Toys Alex Murphy and the Hot Toys Diecast Robocop. And then finally, down here we've got the Hot Toys Tumblr with third party Bane. Then you've got the Hot Toys DeLorean with Marty McFly from Hot Toys as well. And then a custom, something I did myself, built the side panel of Doc's van, the wee truck wheel on it down there. Uh, and I had Christopher Lloyd and Lee Thompson sign that at um, London Comic Con. <clears throat> now we're on to the last, the last wall, final stretch. On the left we have some Lord of the Rings swords. So we've got Strider sword, we've got Boromir sword and we've got Sting. I have got another few swords, so I've got Gandalf's sword, King Theoden's sword, um, but no space to display. So they are currently sitting in storage at the moment. Um, but these are my, apart from the High Elven Warrior, which we've already seen, these are my three favourite swords and I've grouped them together. So <clears throat> they're all first release. I know United Cutlery have re-released a lot of these swords in the past and they're currently re-releasing a lot of them just now so you can go and pick all these up. Boromir was a very sought after sword um, for a long time in the Lord of the Rings kind of collectible universe. I believe they have or they are going to re-release that sword. So it gives more collectors a chance to own it. And it's one of the best swords from Lord of the Rings, in my opinion, other than Sting. <clears throat> uh, I think at the time, you know, th these were retail prices. So Strider, 120, Boromir, 130, um, Sting. This was the other thing that I was referring to is the first ever thing that I bought. Must have been 2001, 2002. Again, that and the Gladiator um, helmet I bought from the Prop Store of London. And this is now well, 20 years old, perhaps. 19, 20 years old. Um, still in the exact same condition it is when it came out of the box. And I have done nothing with it. So I've never oiled it. I've never cleaned it. And I just use a kind of <clears throat> a sock or a, uh, a, a cloth dry cloth to kind of wipe some of the dust from it. But other than that, you know, our climate is, is it, it ranges, you know, Scotland's cold in the winter and, and mild in the, in the summertime, springtime, but we don't get high temperatures or really low temperatures. And our humidity can be quite stable. So I don't have the same problems in my collection as what others do across the world with high and low humidities and extreme temperatures. I'm very lucky in that respect, although I would like a bit of higher temperature more, more often than not. Um, however, don't have to do much maintenance with these. Um, there's no rust on them, there's no blemishes. Um, just wipe them down every so often. Um, and that's that. They're, 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 they're great items, you know. Nice weight to them. If you don't have a United Cup of the sort, and you've always thought, yeah, yeah, I quite like one, I, I would recommend picking one up, especially Sting. Um, it's a very small kind of dagger type sword, being a hobbit sized weapon. Doesn't take a lot of room up um, and it's iconic. Everybody knows 
you know, who, who, who's seen Lord of the Rings or who's, who's into movies knows what that one is. Um, and it's got, it's got great etching on it. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would recommend Sting. But Boromir is one of these ones that is my personal favourite. Just love the design, the shape, etc. that sort. And then down here, the lighting's not the best. This is another self-made prop. Let me lift this up. <coughs> so this is just made out of wood. And it's coated with um, car body fill or Bondo. Now this is the, the, the Moria Orc sword that I put together um, many years ago. And it's just a, a, a template of wood cut out and then all I did was using a hand file, um, some car body filler bondo and some sandpaper, just sanded it into shape and filed it into shape. Um, it's probably about three foot long and as you can see I've had it signed by Sean Aston. If I flip it round and again it's kind of two minds whether to get this item signed um, but I did anyway. If I flip it round I've also got some uh, some other signatures from the, the Hobbit. So these are three dwarfs, Oin, Dwalin and Dory um, from the Hobbit who I met at a con. I just had them sign the sword. Um, but I'm quite pleased with it. It didn't cost me anything apart from, you know, there's probably about, what, <clears throat> 80 pound worth autographs on it. But the actual sword itself didn't cost me anything to make. It was things I had lying around anyway. So that's that. Down here in the windowsill, I've got the Weta Lord of the Rings statues from the special edition DVD. <clears throat> Moving up above the window, I have my Carrie Fisher signed autograph, which I got in person um, at the celebration. I've got Sigourney Weaver, which I got in person at London Comic Con. I've got Bridget Nielsen, which again I got in person at the Sci-Fi Comic Con. Love for the love of Sci-Fi. I've got Elijah Wood um, from Official Picks. So I haven't, haven't met Elijah in person. Uh, hopefully maybe one day, but the, um, this was done as an Official Picks event. I've also got Jesse Ventura. Add Blaine and Predator, who I met at the same con as Bridget Nielsen, um, for the love of sci-fi. Uh, and I had him sign it with a quote, and it's a bunch of slack-jogged faggots around here. Uh, I don't think he was particularly wanting to write it, but yeah, I persuaded him in my uh, my charms to, to do it. And then up here is my, uh, my Mark Hamill um, autograph, which again is in person from Celebration. Running down here, new addition to the collection is the Sabre Trio um, Skylar Dark Edition FX Stunt Sabre. Uh, beautiful quality Sabre, I uh, really love that one. And then a couple of things I've just recently put together and I'm going to do a bit of a, a build video on. This is the Hot Toys Look Skywalker um, figure and in front we've got the Master Replicas Son of the Jedi Luke Skywalker Saber. Like I said, I'll do a video on that with all the different components and how I built this display and put it together. And then on the right hand side, we've got the Hot Toys Vader um, from A New Hope, I believe. And in front of him, and this is a work in progress display, so I haven't quite finished this one off yet. I've still got to put lights in it. We've got the Master Replicas uh, Darth Vader Saber. Uh, and a signed in-person plaque from the late, great Dave Prowse. Uh, moving on to another part of the house and finally we have two items in here. This one, the half-scale Batman bust by DC Direct, I believe. I really like this one, paid about £100 for it a couple of years ago. It's, it's pretty well sculpted. It's a good size, being the half scale. Um, not perfect, but I'm really, really happy with it. I think it's a great little item to have if you're a Batman fan. And then moving on to the final piece, almost what I would call the crown jewel of my collection. The Queen Studios one-third scale Joker statue with the rooted hair. 
There is a separate video on this one for those who are interested, so please do check that one out. But this thing, from a scale point of view, from a quality point of view, is absolutely phenomenal. There we go. That's the Joker. Queen Studios Joker. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's room tour in full. As I mentioned throughout the video, there are other videos on the channel which will look at both the One Six and the Star Wars collection, as well as other videos on some of the individual items. So if you're interested, please check them out. If you li liked what you saw today, I'd really appreciate the uh, hitting the like button. And if you have any questions or comments, please do add them below and I'd be very interested to see what you all think um, and if I can answer any questions, I will. More videos to come each week as we progress. I've got some really good ideas on what we could we could put up on the channel. Um, some fun stuff and some in-depth, um, serious kind of like how-to stuff, build displays, etc. Um, and if you want to know about how the room is put together, um, some of the display choices, display tips and ideas. There's another video there which goes through the lighting, the colour of the walls, the shelves, etc, etc. So please subscribe to the channel if you want to see some of the videos coming up. We will be doing a video at least once a week. Um, so there will be some new content always on the channel. Um, and if you are interested and you're on Instagram, um, I do post up photographs from time to time. Um, so check out G17 underscore collectibles uh, and follow the uh, the page um, to get some, some content put up on that platform. Thanks very much for joining us. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. And if you've posted comments in the past, again, thanks for that. I really appreciate it. It keeps the uh, encouragement moving along to continue putting things on YouTube and sharing my collection. Again, I do hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you next week on the next video. So until then, take care.